السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions, his entire household. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. Brothers and sisters, there are so many hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we all know that his words were inspired from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he uttered was not just from himself. As Allah says, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not utter words from his own desires. It is indeed revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we take seriously the statements made by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his movements, his character, his conduct, and anything he did in his life. We take it very seriously. From amongst these words, we will come to learn, and I'm sure we have come across, certain wordings wherein he has described true believers. And sometimes he has gone forth to say, whosoever believes in Allah and the last day should do this or should do that. Today I want to spend a few moments going through some of these narrations because the Prophet ﷺ was addressing the believers, those who claim to believe, and he was informing them of what is required of them to be considered true believers. So these issues that he might have raised would perhaps have been that which some of us might take for granted, not realizing it is a part of your Iman. You claim to be a mu'min, will ask yourself, how do you behave? You claim to be a Muslim, will ask yourself the following questions. If the answers of those questions are negative, then we need to improve before we can actually consider ourselves good Muslims, good believers. So let's take a look at one of these narrations. There is a narration which is muttafaq alayh, which means it is upon the highest level of authenticity, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يؤذي جاره. Powerful statement. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should not harm his neighbor. Imagine if Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is uttering a word. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day. I think a lot of us would have thought he would have said, you know, something that we might have considered much more important. But this is of utmost importance. It is the fact that we don't even think for a moment, how have I harmed my neighbor? Let me pause there for a moment. First, let's analyze these words. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day. We are believers. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. We believe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final Nabi, his statements are final. We believe in the angels, the books, the prophets, the last day, resurrection, good and bad faith from Allah. All this we, we believe. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has added on top of the statement here in the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, whosoever believes in Allah, it was enough for him to have said that. He didn't need to say, and the last day, because belief in the last day is part of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the reason why the last day was added, what is going to happen on that last day? Accounts are going to be taken. Of whom? Of myself and yourselves, all the deeds we've done, anything that has happened. So the good will benefit me and the bad is going to be to my detriment. So this is why he raised that issue to say, be careful, not only believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but part of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to know that you and I are accountable completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you are definitely a person who is worried about the last day, you know what that means? Every day I'm worried. What will happen the day I meet with Allah? I'm going to be giving my accounts. I'm going to be answering questions. I'm responsible for everything I did or, I did or said. If I'm worried about that, what will I say? What will I utter? What will I do through my life? Everything will be in order. And every day when I do things, I will be worried to myself. Has Allah accepted this? And I will have hope in Allah. Ya Allah, I tried my best, accept it from me. MashaAllah. 
And whenever I falter a little bit, I will have such a great worry. Ya Allah, forgive me. Even if it was something minor, something small. But my worry for the last day will make me constantly ask Allah's forgiveness. And this is why arrogant is he who does not ask Allah's forgiveness. Because nobody can claim that he or she is perfect. Sometimes without even realizing what I just did was totally wrong. You know, sometimes the way we talk, anything, the way we walk sometimes, it gives off this impression that we are haughty. May Allah forgive us and make us come across humble. To come across humble with humility is a part of Iman. It's a part of your conduct that is a requirement of your deen. It's mentioned in the Quran. So if a person is worried every moment about the day he is going to meet with Allah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his life will become straightened. Straightened. So let's ask Allah's forgiveness. Now he says, after we look at why he has mentioned separately belief in the last day, now we look at the issue. Do not harm your neighbor. I need to live. Right next to me, right now, there are so many people. What scent am I letting off? Have I bothered to come to the masjid with a good smell? Have I had a bath? Or have I, for example, made my wudu properly? Or are my feet smelling? Ha- am I of such perspiration that the people next to me are, are, are suffocating? May Allah protect us. That's a neighbor of a different nature. Someone is sitting next to you, they are close saying, Anyone nearby to you in any way is considered your neighbor. Anyone nearby to you, whether it is the house next door, the country next door, that a person driving nearby to you, any form of proximity whereby there is means of interaction of any nature, that is your neighbor. Make sure that that interaction is totally beneficial. Like for example, some of the books have made mention of a, a smoke or a fire that you might have lit to cook some food and if the smoke is going to the neighbors. That, for example, is it shows that a person doesn't have the decency to go to the neighbors to apologize or to ask or to say a word or two, bare minimum if it's a beautiful bride, mashallah, with all the Nando sauces that we are used to today, send the peace next door, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Because that is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu When you are cooking some stew, he says, Exactly this. When you are cooking some stew, add a little bit more water and give some to the neighbors. Wow! That is a hadith of the Prophet wasallam. Amazing! With us, subhanAllah, we won't mind the tents going. The poor hungry children next door are probably thinking, hey, they're having a beautiful bride next door. And they themselves don't really have much to eat. What type of a mu'min is that? What type of belief in the last day does that person have? Surely there is a bit of panel beating that is required. May Allah protect myself and yourselves and grant us goodness. So let's become people who help those around us. When we are driving, courtesy on the road is included in this hadith. Courtesy on the road, people might say, but how? That's your neighbor. Be courteous. We are all guilty sometimes of being in a rush. Sometimes, you know, we've just got a lovely vehicle and we're just racing down the road. May Allah forgive us all. SubhanAllah. But the truth is, we need to be courteous. You need to let people in. You need to understand one day you might be in a rush and so on. May Allah grant us goodness. You believe in the last day, you're going to look at the benefit of the neighbor and the person you've interacted with. So, before we move to the next point, I want to cap this by saying, my brothers and sisters, anyone and everyone you interact with in your entire life, ask yourself, how have I left them? Have I left them having benefited from me, or have I left them in a way that they have been harmed by me? May Allah protect us. If we cannot benefit them, one of the biggest things you could do is don't harm them. Today, <coughs> you know, when a person looks at others and he sees a lot of people, he says, that one harmed me, this one stole my money, that one did this, that one backbid about me, that one. And so what happens is society degrades itself to a very low, but the minimum is if you see someone, this man has never harmed me. Today you can smile at him and like, greet him nicely <laughs> because he hasn't harmed you. We have changed, the world has changed. A mu'min is supposed to benefit, but if you cannot benefit, the bare minimum, don't harm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in this way. So this goes back to the hadith, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Whosoever believes truly in Allah in the last day, they will never harm those they interact with. And here the hadith, what is mentioned specifically is the neighbor, and I've explained, explained the broad translation of the term neighbor. Let's move to one of the other parts of the hadith. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا Whosoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day should only utter that which is beneficial or should remain silent. 
amazing. Why? Because I'm worried about my account. That's the truth. So when Allah says, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, He means whoever from amongst you is really worried about dying. Whoever from amongst you is really worried about meeting with Allah, just watch your mouth. That's what He said. Whoever is worried about meeting with Allah, if we watch our mouth, subhanAllah, when we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there'll only be good words that will come out. And there'll only have been words, subhanAllah, that are so beautiful that whenever we wanted to say something negative, we forced ourselves to keep quiet. And I want to draw your attention to a very powerful hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that Imam Ahmad has narrated. He says, لا يستقيم إيمان العبد meaning the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يستقيم إيمان العبد حتى يستقيم قلبه The iman, the belief of a person, the belief of a worshipper of Allah will never be upon steadfastness until his heart is straight. So your belief is not going to be straight until your heart is straight. That means I need to fight throughout my life to make sure that my heart is upright. Clean heart, good heart, look at things in a positive way, lead a life of happiness by the will of Allah from within. That doesn't just come without a struggle. You need to condition yourselves to be happy with the decree of Allah. Otherwise you will be a sad man or a sad woman forever. May Allah protect us and help us to condition ourselves. And he continues to say, وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ إِيمَانُ الْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمَ لِسَانُهُ And the iman of a believer, a, a person's belief cannot be straight until his tongue is straight. Which means, my iman is displayed through my tongue. If I'm a good believer, I watch what I say. I make sure that I speak good words. Every one of us, myself included, we can do more to, inshallah, enhance the way we use our tongues. And inshallah, we can use good words, we can select the words we utter, we can say words that will put smiles on people's faces. If you want to swear, keep quiet. Just remain silent, you know. May Allah protect us. And if without a struggle, it's not going to come. You know, some people have a habit especially those who might be working with colleagues and so on and they get irritated because work is not done and sometimes we begin to utter words that are not the words of a mu'min. The hadith says your iman is displayed through your tongue. The minute you start uttering those dirty words, it shows this man's iman is weak. What is the meaning of that iman? Go back to the hadith. If you believe in the last day, you will watch your tongue. Which means and if you are worried about the day you're going to meet with Allah, you're going to keep quiet. You're going to make sure that everything I'm going to say is penned down by the angel as a positive statement, not a negative one. So surely, my brothers and sisters, we must make an effort to enhance the way we use our tongues. And like I said, without an effort, you achieve zero, nothing, no. No point to go out and say, wow, we are Muslims, did you hear the powerful hadith? Well, a lot of people actually think, you know what, Islam is one thing and Muslims is another thing. May Allah protect us. We are supposed to be one and the same thing. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَكُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah and whoever is concerned very very seriously about the day that they will have to be giving in their accounts to Allah will make sure that they utter a good word, lovely word, beneficial word or they remain silent. And to end the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu he says وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمَ لِسَانُهُ وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمَ لِسَانُ الرَّجُلِ مَا لَمْ يَأْمَنْ جَارُهُ بَوَائِقَ It's a hadith which is connected. He says, and the, the tongue of a person will never be straightened if his neighbors are not protected from his harm. What does that mean? That means those I interact with, those I meet with, whether it's in the masjid, whether it's a neighbor of the house, which is the primary neighbor, whether it is anyone else that I've, I've come across or interacted with, a neighbor at the workplace, at the school, wherever else it is, if they are not protected from my harm, that means my tongue will not be straight, and that means my iman is not straight, and that means my heart is not straight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, and may He help us to straighten ourselves. <coughs> it's amazing how powerful these words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we take a look at more of the same hadith, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about those who are worried about the day of accounts, we will find the Prophet ﷺ says, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهُ Whoever believes in Allah and is concerned about 
the last day, concerned about the day they're going to have to give in their account, they will always honor their guests. What is the meaning of honoring their guests? A person visits you, a person is your guest, you will honor them, you will try and provide for them, facilitate for them, make things easy for them, make them feel comfortable and make them feel at home. To be honest, this is a sign of Iman. Do you know, if you look at this hadith, the part where it says they will be protected from your harm, that is the part that is ensuring that you do not harm someone. The part where it says that they will honor their guests, it is a part showing that now not only will you not harm them, you will go out to benefit them. You see the, 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 the link between the two? Once we've protected ourselves from harming others and they are protected from our harm, now I need to ask myself, that's not enough, let me go and honor, let me go and you know, give something, let me at least respect. And when we say ikram, ikram does not just mean to give them food. A lot of people have this misconception that you know the guests came to my home and I did ikram. And when you ask them, what does that mean? They say, I fried samosas, I had some tea, I had this. My brother, but you were swearing and you were backbiting and as soon as they left you said these people shouldn't have been here and so on. Proper ikram is that they are saved from the evil of your tongue and you make them feel at home and comfortable and you honor them even in their absence. Person comes to your home and stays for three days. And mashallah, you make them feel like a king. And as soon as they leave, you say, hey, that was tough. I, I, these guys shouldn't have been here. Well, what you did is you poured water over the whole hospitality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. You should be happy. Do you know the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when visitors did not come to their home for a day or two, they were worried that where is the barakah? Because they were taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, zaratna al-barakah, which means when people visit them, the barakah has visited them. It's barakah. Someone's sustenance is written in your home. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness and may He open our doors. I want to raise a pertinent point. This is speaking about your guest, my guest. Where are we sitting? The house of Allah. Whose guests are we right now? The guests of Allah. If Allah is telling you to honor the guest of your house, what do you think is the status of the guest of Allah? The guest of the house of Allah. This is why when you come to a masjid, do not let a single person feel unwanted in the house of Allah. You are a guest and so am I. And so is everyone else. We are all guests of Allah here. So what we are doing here, we are learning from the hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone visits you, honor them. And from that we are taking it a step ahead and we are saying, well if someone is the visitor of Allah and he's the guest of Allah, you honor them more. So when I look at you in the house of Allah, I must smile at you. I should not raise issues that will make you feel uncomfortable in the least. I want to see you here again and you should see me here again and again and again. Because those who meet each other for the sake of Allah will be earning Jannah with the great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we meet here often and we learn to love one another because we meet here and because it's the sake of Allah and so on and we make people feel comfortable, the house of Allah and we do not pressurize them into anything that they would not feel like engaging in in a way that tomorrow they are here again and the following day they are here again and mashallah this entire bond makes us feel part of a family Allah says those people I look at them with a special mercy they deserve a special shade on the day of Qiyamah so my brothers and sisters, when we arrive at the house of Allah, each one must be conscious of how you have looked at the other. Let's smile. Greet those you know, greet those you don't know. And don't get into nitty gritties that will make people feel uncomfortable. Brother, you know, I came to your shop the other day. I found your stuff quite expensive. Why are you saying that in the house of Allah? This is the guest of Allah. He did not come here to do a deal. Allahu Akbar. That statement should have been uttered elsewhere because now we have harmed the guests of Allah by raising something which is cheap and low in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. The same applies. You look at someone and you start saying, hey, I heard you went through a divorce. What happened? Allahu Akbar. Who are you to ask such questions? Leave that out. It's not none of your business, number one. Number two is, if you really worried about him, without him or her knowing, you can make dua for them. But here, you make them feel wanted. And I think that is the policy we have had and we pray to maintain because it is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So, I have made mention of a few of these. There are still, there is still one more. I'm just going to say it in, in passing, but I won't go into its detail. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِمَةِ Whoever believes in Allah and is worried about the day of accounts, they should go forth to maintain their family ties 
and to repair the broken family tie, that shows and proves that you are worried about the day you're going to meet with Allah. Because you go out of your way to mend family ties, you know, and inshallah we will speak about that perhaps if we get a chance, and we will go into the details of it, where inshallah we'd like to talk about the issue of maintaining family ties, inshallah, in another lecture. For now, I have said what I have.